Hello friends, welcome to this short tutorial from Pathology Made Simple at ILO Pathology. Uh, first of all, let me wish you a very happy new year. Today's topic is, uh, we will understand uh, at another important hallmark of cancer that is Warburg effect in cancer, which is a major metabolic shift or uh, we even call this as reprogramming energy metabolism. So the learning outcomes for today's uh, topic will be uh, after a brief introduction about the energy metabolism, you know, we will move on to understand what the Warburg effect is and we will understand why and how uh, of this particular effect in the cancer cells. And lastly, we will understand the significance of understanding this Warburg effect. Moving on to some of basics in metabolism. Uh, we all know that every cell needs energy, isn't it? So this energy is derived within the mitochondria by an oxygen dependent process called oxidative phosphorylation where 36 molecules of ATP is generated okay so this happens predominantly in the mitochondria but it also happens in the cytoplasm by a process called glycolysis where it does not require any oxygen okay so only two molecules of ATP is generated when you see uh, these two different uh, mechanisms where energy is derived it is very much obvious that oxidative phosphorylation is more efficient when it comes to production of energy, isn't it? So what we understood um, in the previous slide is that when you have adequate oxygen, ATP is generated by oxidative phosphorylation, whereas as the levels of oxygen decreases, there is a shift from oxidative phosphorylation to glycolysis. Okay, And this shift is known as anaerobic glycolysis. It is also referred to as pasture effect. Now, in the early uh, 20th century, okay, a German physiologist named Otto Heinrich Warburg, he found a peculiar thing while he was studying cancer cells. Okay, What he observed was the cancer cells had increased rates of glycolysis. So that was despite the availability of adequate oxygen levels. Okay, And he called that effect as aerobic glycolysis or he named it as Warburg effect. So basically, Warburg effect is increased rates of glycolysis despite the presence of adequate oxygen levels. Now let us understand this in an illustration. Okay, so what happens in normal cell? So you have a mitochondria. So that is a mitochondria. So this is a molecule of glucose which is converted to pyruvate by a process called glycolysis. So we all know that glucose is converted to pyruvate by a pathway called glycolysis. This pyruvate in the presence of oxygen, you know, enters the mitochondria and through oxidative phosphorylation generates ATP. So this is what happens in the normal cell. But some part of pyruvate is also converted to lactic acid and vice versa. So lactate gets converted to pyruvate and pyruvate gets converted to lactate. See the amount of lactate produced uh, in the normal cell is very insignificant. Now what happens in the cancer cells? That is what we are interested in, isn't it? So in the cancer cell, what happens predominantly is that there is no oxidative phosphorylation. So this particular step that is oxidative phosphorylation is not there. Um, well, it is wrong to say that there is complete shut off of oxidative phosphorylation. Rather, we can say that the oxidative phosphorylation is significantly reduced. So when there is no oxidative phosphorylation or when the oxidative phosphorylation is significantly reduced, that means to say that even the amount of ATP generated is also reduced. So what happens in cancer cells? In cancer cells, the most important thing which happens is there is increased uptake of glucose. Okay, so this is what we call it as glucose hunger. So this uh, increased uptake of glucose is because of increased expression of GLUT1 receptor, which actually facilitates the transport of glucose across the cell membranes. So once you have more and more glucose within the cell, so there is obviously increased glycolysis. So there is increased conversion of glucose to pyruvate. So in cancer cell, the ATP is generated by a process of glycolysis. So now that this step is not there, that means the, the pyruvate going into mitochondria for oxidative phosphorylation is significantly reduced. That means to say that there is only probability that pyruvate gets converted to lactate. So in cancer cells, there is increased conversion of pyruvate to lactate. So that means to say that there is increased accumulation of lactic acid, which results in decreased pH. So note that this entire pathway, okay, there is increased uptake of glucose, predominant glycolysis and conversion to lactate, decreased pH. All this happens despite the presence of oxygen. So this is known as the Warburg effect. Isn't this a major metabolic shift? 
Now the puzzling questions of this major metabolic shift are three things. One, is this phenomenon cancer specific? The second question would be, why do cancer cells activate glycolysis? That too, despite the presence of oxygen. The third one, how do they manage to activate glycolysis? Let us answer these questions one by one. See, the first question, is this phenomenon cancer specific? The answer is no. So it is not cancer specific because this this type of aerobic glycolysis is found in all rapidly growing normal cells as in the case of embryonic tissue. So what we should know is that this is a property of growing cells, all growing cells, but this property got stuck in the cancer cells. So when I mean stuck in the cancer cells, it means it's always in switched on position. Okay. What happens in the normal cells is that once the cell is no longer growing, the aerobic glycolysis stops. But in the cancer cell, this aerobic glycolysis do not stop. And that is because of activation of oncogenes or loss of tumor suppressor genes or overexpression of any other genes, which we will try to understand. The second question was, why do cancer cells activate glycolysis despite the presence of oxygen? See, we all know that in a growing tumor, there is always a probability that the tumor outgrows its oxygen supply. Okay, so this type of aerobic glycolysis assures ATP synthesis when such a thing happens. The second important explanation given is, see the metabolic intermediates of aerobic glycolysis, they provide the raw material for synthesis of cellular components of these rapidly dividing tumor cells. Okay, and what is more important is that they also favor tumor growth. So we need to understand that for the cell to grow, it has to duplicate all the components of the cells, not just DNA, isn't it? So you need to have those building blocks. And for those building blocks, you need to have the carbon moieties. In oxidative phosphorylation, what really happens is that only abundant ATP is produced, but no carbon moieties. Whereas in the case of aerobic glycolysis, only few ATP is produced and the rest of the glucose is utilized to produce more intermediates, which can be utilized to build these building blocks okay and that's how they favor tumor growth the third one is see the release of lactic acid we know that the pyruvate is getting converted to lactate so once you have increased lactic acid accumulation that means that there is decreased ph and this is very important because lowering of extracellular ph is the one which favors tumor invasion okay and the spread of the tumor and it also suppresses the immune effectors. So this means to say that there is a distinct advantage of this particular metabolic shift. Now, how do they manage to activate glycolysis? So there are many explanations given to this. One of the probable explanation is, so there is overexpression of hypoxia inducible factor one. You should know that this hypoxia inducible factor one is a master transcriptional regulator of cellular and developmental response to hypoxia. Okay, what happens in the cancer cell is that there is overexpression of this hypoxia inducible factor. What it really does is it increases the transcription of many genes which codes for the proteins which favors cancers. Now, what are these uh, proteins which favors cancer? One important is there is increase in the production of vascular endothelial growth factor and that can result in angiogenesis. The second types of proteins which favors cancer are, you know, they, they help the cancer cells to resist apoptosis. The thirdly, which is what we are interested in is, it increases the glucose metabolism. Now, how this HIF1, you know, favors glucose metabolism is what we need to understand. So, recollect this particular diagram which I told you. HIF1 increases glucose uptake by upregulating GLUT1 expression. So, it just means that the GLUT1 expression is increased and that results in increased uptake of glucose and that is what we call this as glucose hunger because we know that GLUT1 is the one which facilitates the transport of glucose across the plasma membrane. The second one is HIF1 increases glucose phosphorylation by upregulating another enzyme called hexokinase 2. Okay, we know that glucose, the first step in glycolysis is conversion of glucose to glucose 6-phosphate by an exokinase, isn't it? So once there is upregulation of exokinase expression, there is increased probability of this particular pathway being activated. The third one, increase in HIF1, it has similar effects as loss of P53 function which means it results in the greater glycolytic flux okay there is reduced oxidation of pyruvate 
and subsequently reduce the production of ATP by oxidative phosphorylation. So this particular step is also explained. What really happens here is that there is increased induction of pyruvate dehydrogenase kinase. Okay. So which prevents the oxidation of pyruvate. Now in summary, how do they manage to activate glycolysis despite the presence of oxygen? One, induction of glycolytic enzymes by overexpression of HIF1. The second one is induction of pyruvate dehydrogenase kinase which reduces pyruvate oxidation. The other explanations given are there is a probability that there is down regulation of mitochondrial enzymes and decrease in the number of mitochondria and also there could be mitochondrial defects due to mutations in mitochondrial DNA and that can lead to malfunction of oxidative phosphorylation. Now so what? Now what is the significance of understanding this Warburg effect? There is a diagnostic significance and a therapeutic significance as well. Now what is this diagnostic significance? So this property of glucose hunger that means increased uptake of glucose is used in one of the important scanning modality of solid tumors that is PET scan positron emission tomography scanning okay what really uh, is done here is 18f fluorodeoxyglucose which is a non metabolizable glucose derivative of glucose is injected into a person okay and this is preferentially taken up by the cancer cells of course it is also taken up by rapidly dividing cells as in the case of bone marrow and you know that this cannot be metabolized so this particular compound gets accumulated in the tumor cells so it's very easy to identify such tumors where there is increased uptake of this labeled fluorodeoxyglucose the second one is therapeutic application where you know numerous glycolytic inhibitors have been developed until now we have understood that it is the glycolysis which actually favors tumor growth so based on this property alone numerous glycolytic inhibitors have been developed which can be a potential anti-cancer drugs so after knowing about all these things uh, one viewpoint or the perspective which we need to understand here is that the Warburg effect is a growth promoting metabolic alteration in the cancer cell okay which is one of the important hallmarks of cancer of course there are lots of explanations have been given for this effect one of them was which i described in the previous slides there are many more explanations and those are beyond the scope of this uh, short tutorial but all said and done the exact cause and its value as of now still remains elusive in summary we came to know what the warburg effect is so we understood the why and the how of this effect and the significance of knowing such an effect in the cancer cell thank you for watching if you like this video please hit the like button do comment and don't forget to subscribe